two times in the same week. We know Mike Bassick, he loves his Dallas Mavericks. He also loves his Texas Rangers. We're talking about a tap in because that lineup looks sexy as hell, man. They're the defending champions, and I don't think they're going anywhere. Uh, Mike Bassick, 105 through the fan in Dallas. Of course, former Major League pitcher. We know who he is. Uh, he's been on the roast many, many times, and we welcome him back on the morning roast. Mike, good morning, man. Now, I know you're on Rangers pre and post game. If I'm not mistaken, are you also on? Are you also doing some color uh, for the Texas Ranger broadcast as well this season? Man, I got lucky enough that yeah, they hired me for a third of the game, so I got to do the uh, Chicago Cubs series and uh, headed to with the Rangers to Detroit and Atlanta in a, a few weeks. That's... So it's it's really exciting. It's it's a dream come true. That was my dream job after baseball was over. But I'm like, to be honest, I was like, I probably wasn't good enough baseball wise to. Oh, we just love it. Came back in, put the lights on. Not a, not a mic. Let's get Mike Bassick out of here. We just dropped him. We just dropped him. All right, we we'll get Mike Bassick on. So he is doing some color. I told you he's he's uh he's doing some color now for the Texas Rangers. Good for Mike, man. He's uh he's he's really good at his job, man. Pre and post on the radio as well, and he's tapped in here. So we'll get to the Dallas Mavericks as soon as you get on. Like the Dallas Mavericks, I know a lot of people probably haven't watched the Dallas Mavericks. This team's legit. I mean, this team is good. Kyrie and, I know and Luka. Kyrie and Luka is working. And I think they've built a really fun team around them. And uh, they, they've got a lot of pieces that, to me, complement each other. And I think that that, like, as we talk about the Warriors, and I, I do think a lot of fans are trying to fast forward, like, get to the end of the, of the season. Let's see what happens in the playoffs. And then a lot of fans in their minds are fast forwarding to the offseason. Right. You know? But I, 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 but I can't blame, like, with this team in particular. I can't blame them for not being psyched up about the 4 one return. All right, we got Mike Bassett back. All right, Mike, we dropped you off a little bit. No, I'm happy for you, man. I saw the news on Thank on you. X uh, over the weekend. I was talking to my producer. I was like, I think Mike is calling games for the Rangers, and what a team to call games for, man, to be a color analyst with that team, that lineup. You get to yeah. be around Bruce Bochy. You're our lucky guy. But real quick, before we get back into baseball, the Dallas Mavericks are in town, and I know you're a big hoop fan. And we were curious as to see whether or not Kyrie and Luka could work together. Well, I'm looking at the Dallas Mavericks right now in fifth place in the Western Conference. I said it on our pregame show here at NBC Sports Bay Area in the Bay Area. The Mavericks are going to beat the Clippers if they meet them in the first-round series. I truly believe that because of the moves they made at the deadline. But let's start with Luke and Kyrie. Are you surprised it's worked so well between the two since they've traded for Kyrie for Brooklyn last season? Yeah, I guess surprised is a strong word, but I will go with that. It is right now. I would say this is very rare in all sports. Obviously, you guys saw it with the Golden State Warriors at a time, uh, 2021 recently. The Mavericks are playing at their full potential, which is so rare in sports that a team can reach their full potential. And I don't know if they can keep it up. I hope they do. But right now, the Mavericks, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I really do think they're title contenders. Can they keep playing this way? They have two great athletic bigs to go with the best offensive player in the NBA in Luka, and Kyrie is playing at such a high level and staying healthy. So if they're, they're both playing off of each other well. Uh, it seems like Luka gets his 25 by halftime, and then Kyrie <laughs> in the fourth quarter kind of takes over the game, and it's working out well. That's really interesting how they've kind of got that dynamic. I, I feel like they've really catered the roster to fit around those two guys. How many how many moves have they made around them, just for the, the average Warrior fan looking at Dallas? Because it feels like a very different roster this year versus the last couple of years. Well, the last few games last year when they tanked to make sure they kept their pick because it goes to the Knicks uh, in the Porzingis trade, they got Derek Lively Jr. out of Duke, and he didn't. He wasn't very good at Duke, to be honest, but he has been great, a seven-foot athletic young guy. Then they get Gafford, yeah. another seven-footer from Washington. Mm -hmm. So now for 48 minutes, they're playing with athletic, long, rangy centers. And you guys saw the if the Warriors fans aren't following Dallas. I get it, but in the playoffs, you saw the Mavericks let mm -hmm. Kevon Looney turn into Bill Russell in right. the playoffs. And <laughs> So now that, that can't happen anymore. Then P.J. Washington, who's inconsistent offensively, but a great physical defender and rebounder. So now all of a sudden the two major weaknesses of the Mavericks through Lucas' time has been defense and rebounding. And now they're above average in both of those. I'm not saying they're great or the best, but they are above average. And offensively they're one of the best teams in the NBA. So it has been awesome to watch them they're on a tough stretch right now the 
the schedule and and God bless you guys. I, I know that the reason the Mavericks are going to to San, to San Francisco tonight was because of the horrible tragedy tragedy you guys yeah. had. But it's been a really tough schedule for for the Mavs. So I don't know how much energy they're gonna, they're going to have. It was in Utah, at Sacramento for two, back to Houston for one, and now back to Sa- uh, San Francisco. So that's a really tough schedule. So sometimes you'll see a team. I'll give the Mavericks an excuse tonight if they don't play well on, uh, because of the travel. Talking to Mike Bassick, 105.3 The Fan in Dallas, of course, former Major League Baseball player, pitcher as well. We know he's made history there, but we don't need to go there. He's a good guy, good friend of the program. Um, Rangers pre and post going to do some games as a color analyst for the Texas Rangers, but big time Dallas Mavericks fan. And you bring up Gafford lively. And of course, PJ Washington coming over from Charlotte. I know Gafford had that crazy stretch. Where'd he go? 35 for 35 uh, at, at one point. And or the Warriors like that. were in the middle of yeah, that. The Warriors were in the middle of that. So you get these long athletic bigs, but Luka Doncic. I mean, the guy dropped 42 the other night, hit nine threes, 47, whatever it was. I mean, every night it seems like he's flirting with the triple double. How has his game grown under Jason Kidd, Mike? So he's pushing the ball a little bit, but what he's doing now, and you might notice it tonight, he's turned into, because his passing is so unbelievable, he's turned into Kevin Love. He'll throw now off a rebound. He immediately looks up for a 70-foot outlet pass for a catch layup or a catch dunk. And so you have to watch out for that now, too, because the Mavericks will leak out on you. And even the bigs will do it off of a rebound. If they have to guard a guy up top, let's just say Draymond Green is up top, instead of trying to go get the rebound, they'll leak out Luka because he's such a great rebounder. Well, now rebound, look up, outlet like Kevin Love. And so that's Mm. one thing he's added. The other thing that I didn't know he could do is – uh, he shot a 20 foot um, finger roll. Yeah, we saw the other that. Night. Like, I, <laughs> we saw I've that. never seen that. I've never seen that in basketball, and I've never seen a dude shoot an 18 foot fadeaway <laughs> hook over Jokic to win a game in Kyrie Irving. So, what's really fun watching the Mavericks with those two guys, you'll usually see something on a nightly basis where you have to question yourself Have I ever seen a pass like that? Have I ever seen a move like that? Have I ever seen a shot like that? And so, it is really entertaining to watch. And the Mavs, when Luka is out, Kyrie takes over, and they really push the ball. So I think it's confusing to teams. They know it, but the Mavs play at two tempos. There's the Luka tempo, and then there's the Kyrie tempo, mm. and then you're not sure when Luka's in. Are they going to push it, or are they going to pull it back? It has been very good. And Dante Exum, Jason Kidd yeah, compared, him to Sean, compared him to Sean Livingston the I other like day, that. and I thought, that's a pretty good comparison on what Sean Livingston brought to the table for the Warriors. That's a good call. Exum's been excellent off the bench for the Mavericks, man. I, he, he, that's a really good call. I didn't think about that one, but I want to know what the Kyrie tempo is because I think people, you know, you get a little exhausted with Kyrie off the floor, especially in Brooklyn, but you forget how good, like, the last time you guys played the Warriors, Kyrie put on a show. He made a left-handed and one floater from like 15 and, feet. And then a game winner and then on the same kind of the shot. Same weekend, <laughs> the same week against the Denver Nuggets. You kind of forget. And Warrior fans know about Kyrie Irving. Trust me, from 2016. He's kind of our kryptonite there. And that's going to be curious for me. What? Who? How do they defend him? But what is it like watching Kyrie Irving on a nightly basis? You bring up the Kyrie Temple. What's that like? Unbelievable. I mean, obviously, you guys have Curry. Curry's handles, they might be a little bit different, but they're similar in, wow, how they can handle a basketball and how they can put a defender on, on either on their heels or on their butt. And so you just watch them at times take over a game, and it's like Luka doesn't mind. You know, everybody has egos. You hear about Kobe and Shaq or, or Penny and Shaq or whatever. Like, guys have egos, especially at young ages. But right now, I think the, also the growth of Luka is – He's he's at times deferring to Kyrie, seeing that Kyrie has it going. He's like, hey, I'm going to stand in the corner or stand up top. They're not going to leave me. They'll they'll guard me, you know, right next to me, half court. So you guys can play four on four basketball right now. And Kyrie takes advantage of that opportunity. But the way that he does layups or around the basket with his left and right and switching in mid air, it's 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 tough because I can't compare it to anybody else. Mike, I, I don't want you to placate the Bay Area. This is why we have you on, because I, I think you're really authentic. You also give us a player's perspective, having played in the bigs. Like, when you look at the Warriors, how are you viewing them? And don't give me the, oh, well, they still have Steph Curry, so they're still a champion. Like, the Warriors this year, this year, what's, your, what's the feeling you get from them? One, I think they're too small. 
They're athletic, but too small because the centers in the West are just, there's just so many of them. It's yeah. a different way, but the, so I just think they're too small. And then I just wonder, my wonder is where they're at standings wise last year and this year and, and how much Curry has left. I just don't, I don't know where the future is for the Warriors, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they need to rebuild a team around Curry, but then you have to ask yourself, is Curry young enough and have enough mm-hmm. left in the tank that we could we could do like a one- or two-year rebuild and in 2026 possibly put a championship team around Curry? Like That's where I look at Golden State. They're a threat, but I just don't see them winning a seven-game series because they, they lack size and and they're going to get tremendously out-rebounded. And defensively, I don't know how they guard some of these teams. Like, you'll see tonight, uh, maybe the Mavericks don't take advantage of it, but when Gafford and Lively dive to the basket, it's not Dwight Powell and Kleba anymore. And so yeah. now you have seven-footers that are two feet above the rim, mm-hmm. and I don't know. Draymond Green can't can't defend that. No, no. Th- thanks for the, the cold dose of, uh, of reality there. Before you get on out the door, I opened up uh, the different uh, websites this morning, and I saw Josh Young broke his wrist. What happened there? I got him in fantasy. Dude, dude this dude, Matt Matton or Maton came in. I'm probably saying his name, name wrong, but he was with Houston last year. So we, Houston and Texas, huge rivals. Yeah. And he, it, was, it was by accident. He backfoots Evan Carter with a, a breaking ball hit by pitch. Then it looked like he might have broke Adolis Garcia's wrist. But luckily he didn't. Then next batter, he hits Josh Young in the wrist and does break his oh, wrist. Oh, my god! It was three oh hitters gosh. in a row, huh. and it was unintentional. It wasn't intentional, but it just – now, it's just unfortunate because he, he had a homer yesterday. He was off to a great start. And if you look at Josh Young's uh, – pro career, minors and majors, he just can't avoid injury, and it's not his fault. Like, there's nothing you can do about getting hit with a pitch in the wrist and it breaking. It's not like he's not stretching or working out. And so now they're going to have to go, I'm assuming, six to eight weeks without Josh Young. The lineup is devastating. I know. I think (laughs) Dodgers, Braves, and Rangers, I think, have the three best lineups in baseball. Wait, not the Giants? The the Giants, well, (laughs) well, that is a tough part. (laughs) That's a tough park to hit in, and no, the Giants are going to have to do it other ways. But, man, I'll tell you what, when you get a chance, when you get to watch this kid Wyatt Langford, oh, we have. if you, <laughs> oh, if we you have, squint, Mike. <laughs> you're like, I'm watching Mike Trout. If you squint, you're like, oh, no, I'm watching the next Mike Trout. Oh, my gosh. Dude, Mike, 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 we were just talking about the most, and we'll let you go in a second here, because, you know, you gotta, you're a busy dude, but... We're just talking about the most lethal lineups like the Braves, the Dodgers, the Phillies, and the Rangers, of course. And you guys are the defending World Series champions. I mean, it's so deep. Like, Josh Young, you guys will miss him. But you got Evan Carter. You got Wyatt Langford. You got Jonah Heim. You got Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon. And you got Bruce Bochy managing that club. I know Jacob DeGrava knows going to come at some point. So, uh, come back at some point. So, I, I mean, you guys have embarrassing their riches in Texas. I mean, really. Is that now a baseball town knowing how much the Cowboys yeah. flame out and don't get to the NFC I, title game? Is now is now Dallas becoming a Ranger town? I wish I could say yes, but I will <laughs> say the first series, the Ranger fans were way more into it. This has been a very cordial crowd. Mm. Uh, and, and against the, the Cubs, you could feel the energy. Now, it was ring ceremony. It was the banner it was a whole bunch of things, but they take on the Houston Astros Thursday through Ooh. Monday or Friday through Monday. So that's going to be huge, and two of those games are nationally televised. So we saw some bean balls yesterday. I really think we're going to have at least – not saying people will throw punches, but I bet in those four games, one of those games – the benches will clear. All right, Mike. Mike, congratulations on the new gig, man. Going to call a third Thanks, of the Rangers kids on TV. We'll have you back on soon. Mavericks and Warriors are going to play twice this week. Huge games. Dallas right now in the fifth spot. The Western Conference felt like a couple weeks ago they were in ninth place, and now they're fifth place. Warriors need this game as well. Mike, you're always kind to us, man. Thanks for the time as always. Ellis. All right, Mike Bassett here. One of. 